This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 48. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co-creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. In the topic of the week this week is adapting your eye exercises to your environment. And in the second half of the podcast, we're going to be answering a question from uh, Facebook that asks, uh, I have a friend who has minus 10 myopia, you know, minus 10 diopters, and he holds a uh, print two inches away from his eyes with his glasses off. Is he straining? So I must say that uh, this is a, a special podcast uh, yeah. that we're doing here today, a bit of a test run. Um, we are uh, doing the audio here and uh, and also video. Well, yeah. we've, we've been getting a few requests, which is great. Um, to, to be seeing us on, on video, and um, which is a bit of a shock. Yes, yeah, so we have to keep our hair <laughs> looking good and uh, I know. good shape now. So. Yeah, n- normally, <laughs> normally Richard and I are doing these podcasts in pajamas. In pajamas, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, but not so much anymore. No. So uh, anyway, thanks everyone uh, for those requests. And uh, so Richard, how's the world of uh, self-healing been treating you this uh, week? Well, I had a, uh, I think I said this on the coaching call, I had a you know, the, the expression two steps forward, one step backward. This was mm-hmm. my one step backward week. Uh, I had to give up spin and gym. Spin and gym this right. week. Spin gym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I, my back seized up on me. Okay. Right? And then uh, you were just actually coaching me through some of the, uh, take, putting on your uh, physical education hat mm-hmm. and coaching me through uh, maybe it's actually a tightening up rather than an injury. So right. I'm I'm a little in in question which one it is at this point. Okay. So, but I for this week I gave up uh, both the gym and the spin class, which is right. not happy and not a happy thing to do. But mm-hmm. it was either that or start hunching over and then using a cane or something <laughs> like that because my back really was seizing up. Yeah, and that's it's it's interesting because um, we talked so much before on our previous podcasts about barriers to eye exercises, right? Um, and barriers to any sort of program, and uh, you see how the, this is how easy it is to sort of fall out of a program. Rich has right. been doing so well over the past, you know, since this has been here, new your New Year's resolution. Right. So since January, he's been uh, working on this new exercise uh, program because he's already got his eye exercises down. So. Um, and also exercise is also part of, uh, yeah, the optic you know, atrophy. Yeah. Yeah. And also a way to improve uh, your eyesight as well by doing the exercise. So, uh, you can see how discouraging, um, it can be when you hit right. something like this. And in fact, we had this on our coaching call, uh, this week, those of you that don't know about our coaching calls, you can uh, head over to the eye exercise express on our website and you'll find a bit more about it. But basically it was somebody was doing an exercise and they noticed a particular strain, when they were doing it, so it was it was put, putting them off actually wanting right. to do the right. exercise. And it's it's so tempting, like in my case, to say, oh, you know, I've got a bad back. I shouldn't do spin or I shouldn't, you know, start coming up a list. Mm-hmm. It really become excuses for for not going back and getting on the horse, essentially. So, yeah. um, so I think actually after our discussion, I was going to take one more week off, but I think I'm going to go back. Mm-hmm. We came up with the idea of me uh, getting on an exercycle in the same shape and position of the spin bike and actually working more in my ergonomics. That was, you were very helpful mm-hmm. about that. So I'm sure my ergonomics are right on the spin cycle. Right. But then taking it easy next week. So mm-hmm. I'd be doing a lightweight sort of spin on my own and then go back to the weightlifting and the, the trainer. So. Yeah. Almost taking a, a step back. Yeah. I guess just, just like with the, um, you know, with any of the eye exercises, if, Say you're really trying to, you know, work harder, maybe even strain to see further down on the eye chart is is to work one level back up again. Back up again, yeah. Uh-huh. So to get and to get my form correct mm-hmm. on the spin cycle, especially. So right, that's my goal for next week is to get back to the gym, but do this modification. Okay. So good. Um, yeah, that's basically my week has been my back and trying to, <laughs> and I've gotten into more into foam tubing and and tennis balls have become my best friend because it it the, the pain here multiplied into my leg and all of this. So I've been okay. doing a lot of that. And and just in case um, p- 
people have taken that literally and think that maybe Richard's kind of losing it a little bit and he has <laughs> tennis balls as best friends. Oh, right, right, right. Um, that's not so much the case. Uh, if you can, you can see the tennis balls uh, exercise on our right uh, website, and we we do a lot of uh, self massage. Yeah, and I guess oh, I guess we could do a little uh, teaching here too. In that, in that, if you say I, we actually, I'm not sure I do have an injury. It may just be a spasm, mm-hmm. but if I do have an injury right here, I would work around the injury, but not the tennis balls on the injury okay. at least for a while. Mm-hmm. And I have been icing it as well. So that's right. two things we would suggest. Good. So yeah. certainly, uh, so certainly working there with the um, the whole injury, the tight muscles, and uh, yeah. moving forward. Yeah. So how was your week? Good. Pretty busy. Um, those of you that have been following our, our Facebook fan page, you'll see plenty of uh, pictures up there of me in uh, New York. Yep. Even though that's not how they speak. For yep. some reason, I've got this idea that they speak quite coffee. I need some coffee, but apparently that's Boston. Yes, that's right. That is right. That so, is right. What, so what would a New York? Uh... Oh, don't ask me to do accents. I'm terrible <laughs> at accents. But and not every, you know, there's so many new people move to New York, so it's a mixture. Right. But you will, oh, you'll, okay. and Brooklyn has a slightly different accent mm-hmm. than other parts of New York. So yeah, it's, I was, it's... I was mainly in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, heading over to Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> that's close. You're getting better. <laughs> we have to. Uh, maybe someone could let us know. Yeah. Send us your best New York imitation, please. Yeah. I did actually uh, some phenomena on YouTube called uh, accent tagging or something about right. it. I stumbled across trying to explain the different um, accents in England. Oh yeah, um, and there seems to be this phenomena going. So maybe I need to look up. Uh, yeah, New York. Yeah, accent. and there's Queens, there's New Jersey's a little right. different than New York, and they're all very <laughs> close to each other. Yeah. So, but it was uh, it was a great trip. Um, the traveling uh, was went very well. It was. Extremely cold, uh, yeah. As I'm sure, again, you'll see all the comments on Twitter and uh, and on Facebook. It was it was like minus four Celsius. Oh my goodness, what's that in Fahrenheit? I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's about twenty eight or yeah. twenty nine, something like that. So when I just come from San Francisco, <laughs> which was about eighteen Celsius and sunshine, so what's right. that like the sixties? Uh, blah, 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 67, 65, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then I went straight into yeah into the cold. So it was it was a bit of a shock. For yeah, the, for the, the California side of me. Um, so, uh, but it was great. I was able to meet up um, with uh, with my clients there in, in New York and uh, make some new friends and uh, meet some new people and uh, and start you know spreading the, yeah. the word a little bit over that over that side of the uh, of the Americas. So uh, it was great, and I'm looking forward. To, uh, I'm planning a trip to head back in a couple of months' time. Mm-hmm. So uh, sorry for those that we had to. Um, put our coaching call off for another week. Right. Um, hopefully next time we might be able to schedule it a little bit better. Yeah. But um, but no, it was uh, it was great. Um, Vision wise, I noticed uh, it was interesting. Before last week, I talked about how because my condition is retinitis pigmentosa, that I noticed one of my um, anxieties of traveling there was that I was getting there late at night, right. and that I was going to have to navigate myself from the airport. Um, into Brooklyn at night time and obviously when you have um, difficulty seeing in the dark then obviously that's something you would be slightly anxious about being in a new uh, place but yep. of course it was fine it was fine yeah. um, you know jumped in the cab apart from the fact that the, the the taxi driver didn't know where I was going and uh, oh right because this Brooklyn is less familiar to him yeah, yeah. he uh, he was like where in Manhattan I said no oh. Brooklyn <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, so luckily I'm not going to advertise any technology but luckily I had uh, the GPS on my phone oh yeah and uh, and it actually knew where it was going so I actually was giving the, the taxi oh. driver directions through the the GPS. Uh, I didn't we, think about that. We yeah. hit the curb a few times. Uh, we we got st- we got lost now a few times. But, uh, but it, maybe it's it. good that your your night vision isn't so good because <laughs> yeah. it's terrifying. Usually, the, your first experience in a New York cab is like right. the most terrifying because they go <laughs> so fast right. and cut off people. And oh yeah. So uh, so that went well. And I guess the only other thing is um, is I had to travel downtown um, into a couple of times into Manhattan. So I was a bit anxious about public transit you can imagine yeah. if you have poor periphery then being around all those people and trying to take in the, the signs and where you are and um yeah. i had to travel quite a distance it was a good 40 minutes oh, yeah. um swapping and changing um the underground wow whatever you call it there, subway subway and um 
and it went great. It was wow. uh, it, it was flawless um, thanks to the uh, New York subway system. Very straightforward. Wow. They announced when everything was coming up. Um, and the 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 ironic thing was is I got there perfectly on time. My appointment was at nine o'clock. I got there at one minute two, and I didn't get lost at all. All right. Until it came to the apartment, <laughs> <laughs> and it was right in the heart of Manhattan. And um, I managed to find it, and I went in, and there was just like a almost like a glass corridor, all mirrors, right? Mirrors. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And uh, and and a lift, right? And there was a couple of people standing there waiting. So I thought I would just wait with them. I thought, well, the lift is already going up, so no one needs to buzz me up. It's already going up. Ah. So uh, so I must wait at least two minutes. Um, the lift turns up. I get in. And I press the floor number. Oh, it doesn't work. And it doesn't light up. Yeah. But I was already in the lift at that point going up. <laughs> so I had to ride up to wherever these other people were. I had to get off, get back on again and go back down to the ground floor. Right. And I remembered, uh, they said, oh, you need to, it needs to be unlocked for you to go up. Right. So I remembered that the, the individual that I was working with had said, you need to buzz. So I then went back, found the buzzer and uh, I buzzed. And they said, oh, Will, uh, you're here. I was like, yeah. They said, uh, okay, just uh, just come on up. You know, I'll, I'll press the, I'll unlock it. So I went to, the, went to the lift, got in, started going up, pressed the four button, didn't light up. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to ride the lift up the again because someone else is in there. Right. Come back down again. And I rang and she said, uh, where are you? Where are you? Are you in the lift? I said, no. no. She said, just stay there and I'll, I'll come down. So, yeah, uh, so she came down. Got me, got in the lift, had to unlock it, ride it up. And it was some complicated system where they have to unlock and send it down. And you have to get that one. That particular run. Exactly. Up. So I guess I must have just uh, missed each one. So anyway, uh, I thought it was funny how my, my anxiety was getting there because of my peripheral vision. Yeah. Uh, and it actually just came down to trying to figure out the lift system yeah. in New York City. Yeah. Well, it was partly because you go call it a lift. I think that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Is it an elevator. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Well, uh, I think it's a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is adapting your eye exercises to your environment. And we came up with this topic partly because of your New York mm -hmm. trip and mm -hmm. the weather you hit there, which was pretty poor. Yeah. Um, it's, it, I guess it originated from Richard uh, made a comment oh, right. uh, yeah. a few months ago about how the, the poor weather, you know, it being winter time right. and uh, how it could be difficult to say, do the sunning exercise and some of these nice exercises that we get to do outside. And he mentioned that he was focusing more on palming and that right. seemed to, uh, to, to hit home with quite, quite a, few a few people, people yeah. quite a few comments saying uh, that that was great and that uh, lots of people were doing a lot more palming. palming yeah. And then when I was in New York, um, of course, the, I, I had the beautiful summer where I started doing my sunning. Um, and then I was in this situation where it was dark and cold again. Right. So uh, I'd actually posted a picture on the Facebook fan page of, uh, of the streets of Brooklyn. And anyone that wants to see it, just look for Envision Self-Healing in, in Facebook. And, um, and so it, it was cold, a little bit dark, and somebody had commented that... Um, Make sure you get some palming done. So we we right. to we see we see, like we <laughs> implanted this idea that palming is yeah. what you do when the weather's bad. Yeah, so which is true actually. It, yeah, yeah. And we we also do get people asking. You know, a lot of the time we say, well, if the sun isn't there, then you can do the skying eye yeah. exercise. True. Um, if it's not twenty eight degrees and wind <laughs> yeah, blowing, yeah. and yeah, yeah. No, I guess you still idea. could, but yeah. So. Um, so yeah, this idea of trying to fit the eye exercises into your environment and also, you know, being in downtown Manhattan is obviously going to be slightly different trying to do your exercises than if you live out in the countryside of... Um... Although, I, I've been in Manhattan a fair amount mm -hmm. and, and I happen to like architecture a lot. Yeah. So for me, shifting in Manhattan and distance looking really ah. come in really well together mm -hmm. because I just take a skyscraper and you know the higher up you look the farther away it is so you, mm -hmm. by the time you're looking at the top of the skyscraper you're plenty your distance is plenty yeah. far away mm -hmm. and then you're looking at windows and architectural details or mm -hmm. like there'll be a stripe on a building and you, you need to distinguish one stripe from another or count them and this goes back to Mayor Schneider who 
when he was working on his vision was counting uh, mm-hmm. in Tel Aviv was counting air conditioning units. Mm-hmm. So there's precedent for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you also do get in cities, um, parks, mm-hmm. and uh, certain areas. Uh, we're probably a little bit luckier here in San Francisco because it's so hilly here. So right. you can sort of find these peaks where you can see some distance looking. Um, so but in, in particular, then, I guess, starting with weather as far as weather is yeah, concerned. Yeah. Then what we're saying there is if... Like for this week, example in San Francisco, uh, the forecast is seven days of sunshine, mm-hmm. uh, which we we tend to get in uh, January time. Yeah, here in here in San Fran, someone who's lived here all my life. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I know that. It's true. Um, so, but whereas maybe if you look at the forecast in New York, then you know, um, cloud, 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 snow, cloud, 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 and um, so instead of not doing your eye exercises say you're in new york mm-hmm. uh, it's very dark and the sun is now so you say well i'm not going to do my i'm not going to do my eye exercise right today. right so instead of that what we're saying is try and adapt to your environment adapt to the weather and maybe you could fit in some palming instead mm-hmm. and you could say well well then what about what the eye exercise is doing what about what the sunning exercise is doing and we're not saying that you're going to cut it out completely. We're saying that you're just going to adapt it to that point in time, that week, that day, and don't feel that you can't do your exercises um, just because you don't have that environment. And I guess we're, we're pointing a little bit to the psychological factor of uh, excuse making. And it's, mm-hmm. it's a natural part of this whole uh, self-healing process is you, you, you're given a program and, uh, you're you're given a sort of a task list and it's just normal psychology to go well it's you know on my task list is sunning Mm -hmm. it's not sunny today and it's just sort of a natural Mm -hmm. excuse making process to go i'm not i'm crossing that off the list (laughs) because i don't have to do that now yeah i'm just i've just gained myself 10 minutes of my day yeah exactly it's like (laughs) we're also time hungry that it's it's Uh almost like chocolate to us like like, oh Mm -hmm. boy i don't have to do that one (laughs) and it, it it leads to it's sort of then you're not sunning this day, you're not sunning that day, mm-hmm. and then it sort of goes downhill from mm-hmm. there. Uh, and then you convince yourself, oh, I just don't have time for it. Mm-hmm. It just becomes the excuse. So we're trying to take away the the uh, we want you to adapt to what's happening around you rather than just not doing it. Mm-hmm. And just like what we talked about with uh, Richard's exercise program, that you know you're, you're always going to hit these barriers. Yeah. Um, and you want to avoid going down that uh, slippery slope. Yes, um, especially of, with the bad back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be painful. <laughs> Is that, you know, one day, oh, well, it's not sunny, so I won't do my sunning exercise. Mm. And then the next day, it kind of is sunny, but well, it's not really sunny enough to do that. Um, right. And then, you know, before you know it, you've not done your eye exercises for a few months, and then you think, oh, I really need to get back into my eye exercises so uh, i guess what we're saying here is is you could either adapt your exercises so um palming is is going to be in everyone's program so you could always focus a bit more on palming or some more of the indoor exercises mm-hmm. like the peripheral vision or whatever yeah. it is that's that's in your uh, program ideally palming is a restful exercise so try and yeah. replace it with another restful it's exercise. almost no excuse for not doing palming no. really no no um, and Although then, people think their room isn't dark enough or something like that, we, you know, we we appreciate darkening your room, but yeah, we don't care that yeah, much. I went for a phase once where I was only palming in the evenings. I kept falling asleep in my hands, and it was pretty. Yeah, uh, it's pretty weird. <laughs> sort of palming, I was sort of uh, dreaming in my hands at the same time. It's a little bit scary. Yeah. Um, so I just started doing it in the mornings instead. So uh, and then also with the sunning, you could either replace it with um, you skying. know skying exercise or. Uh, you know, a push, we don't really recommend it, but maybe a full spectrum light or something. Right. Um, so, you know, you, you can replace it with a different exercise. Um, I think we would, there. just to clarify that, I think our first choice would be skying Yeah. over the full spectrum light. Mm-hmm. Um, but I suppose it could be zero degrees outside mm-hmm. and cloudy and it would be hazardous to your nose or something to go outside. <laughs> and then, yeah. then we'll go for this full spectrum lighting. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then what Richard was talking about before is the actual uh, building itself or the actual environment 
around you. So one thing that we come across a lot of living in the city and also a lot of people we work with um, is in those more urban uh, areas is that, you know, you don't have a nice uh, hill to go and uh, to look out into the distance or some nice big countryside to go and do that. Mm -hmm. So frequently we come across people um, that have that difficulty. Yeah. And and, and really there's even an average street you know, mm-hmm. there, well, unless you live in some Greenwich Village with tiny little streets or something like that, mm-hmm. the even if you look across the street, you're you're looking twenty feet. So that's mm-hmm. we would if you have nothing else to do for, for the distance looking, you can at least look across the street. Um, we are fine with you looking through the window across the street. We're not that fussy about that. Mm-hmm. We do like the sunning to happen with an open window, mm. but distance looking across the street is fine. I have, uh, saying that though, I have noticed uh, in particular uh, my windows at the moment face out onto a, on a particularly busy road. Yeah. And um, I haven't quite built up the courage yet to ask the landlord because he, he is such a nice guy mm-hmm. to, to, to come out and clean our windows. Clean your windows, yeah. Uh, for us. And, and it is uh, up a couple of floors up, so it's not yeah. something I can do myself. So um, I do notice, and I've also noticed this when I do distance looking, say, on the bus. Okay. Or something is that if there if there is dirt or something on the oh. uh, my focus does tend to be it um, shifts a bit. Yeah, it yeah. Can, can. So just be aware of that. Ideally, the window would be open. Yes. Um, and also, you you know, you're getting some nice fresh air and all the rest of it. So if you could have uh, the window open, then that would be ideal for the distance looking. Some people, like say you're up in a high rise building, well, you know, in generally you're not allowed to open up. Right. Um, windows. But they tend to have window cleaners, so their windows are cleaner usually. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. True. And if not, then just ask your boss that you want to do some eye exercises. So can they clean all the windows of the building? Right. I'm pretty sure they would just agree with you and say, yeah, we get that done ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've gone so far, though, to, to, the, to the other extreme. I, mean, mm-hmm. I rented an apartment over in Berkeley when I first moved down from Washington okay. that had a roof deck. And I did it specifically for eye exercises. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then when I bought this house, I knew there was a spot mm-hmm. close by for distance looking. So if you have that opportunity and you're moving, just mm-hmm. think about it. Yeah, my my uh, for example, my last apartment did have a have a rooftop uh, garden, so it was very easy for me just to go north side. I guess yeah. you call it. Everything's yeah. uh, north, south, east, west in America. Yeah. And um, and do my sunning and my distance looking. But where I am at the moment is I don't necessarily have that. Yeah. Um, but I do have a, a tiny back garden that I'm able to go and do some sunning in, um, or I can open a window and get some sun. And uh, distance looking, um, I can do from the top of a hill or, or out through my right window. And maybe you make compromises for three day, three or four days of the week, and then you take for three or four days a week, you go to a, an actual park with a view or something like that. Yeah, and this then brings up. Uh, the issue that we, that we oh, right, right, come right. across often is obviously it would be great um, if you could just get out and do these exercises in a park. Um, a lot of what we talk about and you'll see, say, in the I Exercise Express is we've divided it up into 10 minute exercises so you can break it up throughout your day. Um, that's great if you've got that opportunity to go and do that. I guess if you're going to make the effort to go to a park, then maybe you'll be looking at a 40 minute stint um, or a half an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Uh, not everybody is able to do that to go to the to go to the park. There isn't right. necessarily that accessibility. Also, we have time issues. Yep. You know, uh, again, the reason why we made the exercises ten minutes is so that you know you, you can, can fit just them in. Yeah. Go out or, st- or still be at your computer or you know whatever break space you have at your workplace or at home. So, but then there is this this other issue of yeah, yeah. doing eye exercises the... in public. <laughs> <laughs> it's the crazy issue. Yeah, that people uh, can be a little bit concerned. It was funny when I was in New York, I was working with um, some some friends over there and they were talking about how doing the exercises, especially like the Melissa, where you have a piece of paper um, taped down the center of your face and throwing a tennis ball back and forth. Right. Um, having um, Doing a tennis ball exercise while sitting on the plane and, and having the tennis ball go rolling oh, up down, no. the, down the gangway or into the bathroom or, you know, into the restroom. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and we know a good friend of ours who's been doing our exercises for a long time, uh, Bob. Right. He, uh, he tells a story about being in the park. In uh, Portland. And uh, so another park visitor... 
turned mm-hmm. him into the police, right? Isn't that the story? Yeah, I think there, were, there might have been a security officer a or security maybe a officer, police. Yeah, and, yeah. and he was doing the sunning exercise where you just turn your head and that from was, side to side. That was too crazy for somebody. Bench. And the yeah. police had to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only story we've ever heard yeah. of that. So we had to explain um, that he was just doing a sunning eye exercise. And by the time he explained about the eye exercises, I guess that's another reason for our learn approach and the learn, create, integrate is that if you get approached by the police, you you can explain why you're doing the eye exercise. (laughs) I'm not crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So that can be difficult. Um, You know, we always get comments like the skying exercise or sunning. You know, I don't have a local park. I can't stand out on my street and do... You know, this exercise, people think I look a little bit crazy. So, um, you hmm. know, we do appreciate after a while you get used to it. You just get used to it. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess you kind of need to ask yourself, um, what is it that's restricting you? Is it the exercise or, or is it your own um, what would you, your own ego? embarrassment? Yeah, basically. your own yeah. embarrassment. Yeah. And, yeah. and eventually you start to come to realize, well, either doing the exercise is having better vision or not doing them and being a little bit embarrassed and soon you do get over it. Um, But if this is you, again, instead of just not doing the exercise, think around how you could do it. Could you do skying from a window or do you have a back garden or can you find somewhere like a local area, maybe even just somewhere where people walk their dogs or maybe there's a couple of tennis courts or somewhere where you can go that isn't that busy. Maybe you choose a time of day that isn't as busy as it normally is. So just playing with it instead of just, well, I can't do this, so I'm not going to do the other right. exercises. Right. So, uh, yeah, so certainly some some areas there um, yeah. for people to... And in general, people don't pay any attention to you. Nine, nine times out of ten, yeah. they might look at you, but they don't really do anything about it. So, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. not getting the police called on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, I think it's a good time to move on to question of the week. And the question of the week this week comes from, actually, it's from YouTube. I think I said Facebook earlier. It's from YouTube. Okay. And this woman had a question about a friend who has minus 10 diopters of myopia. So that's a fairly large amount. And she was worried about this friend because he was reading uh, text from about two inches. Uh, And I told her on uh, YouTube that that's normal. That, that the higher the degree of myop- uh, higher degree of myopia, the closer you have to hold the text. Oh, this is all with the glasses off. Mm-hmm. So the thing to know about myopia is that it's, it's an elongated eyeball, and yeah, mainly. And then what it does is it kind of creates the effect of a plus lens. Okay. So if you have a minus ten diopters of myopia, you have the equivalent of a ten. It's not quite 10 power, a plus 10 magnifier mm-hmm. in your eyes. So if you think about a magnifying glass that powerful, which is about, it's pretty powerful. You're, the, the more powerful the lens is, the closer you have to be to something for it to function correctly. Okay. So that's what's going on. He has a very powerful magnifying lens built into his optic system. Mm-hmm. So he needs to hold the, the print very close. And... And so I explained to her on YouTube, sorry that I thought of this later, but I, I said, that's normal. But mm-hmm. then I, as I thought about it over the next last 24 hours, I was realizing something that happens to me, which is, you know, because of the optic atrophy, I hold things close. My myopia isn't that much. Okay. By holding it close, the object, the, the letters get bigger in my field of view, and it's easier for me to read them. Mm-hmm. So, but I've noticed... Uh, I've known this for a while, but I've noticed it even more lately. As I move closer, I lose my left eye. Okay. So, yes, the letter is bigger, mm-hmm. but I've just lost fusion. Right. And by losing his left eye... <laughs> oh, good point. Just to clarify again, <laughs> along, along, with his, along with his tennis balls being colorful his best language. friend. <laughs> he's got one eye and his best friend's a tennis ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what he means is, is, is uh, you use both eyes to focus right, right. On, on, on an object. If you put your uh, arm out in front of you and put your finger up, as you look at your uh, finger, uh, you will have both eyes looking at it if, right. you know, unless if, you have someone else. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so as you're bringing that object over to one eye, at some point, um, maybe because the nose is in the way or that you're just um, focusing more with that one eye, mm-hmm. that you're then sort of disengaging 
the eye that you're not favoring and then you're overworking. And I would imagine then that what we would say is the one that you're bringing it closer to tends to either be your dominant eye or your clearer eye. Right. So you're then overworking. We do so much work trying to bring balance between the two eyes. Um, you can check out our obstructing, obstructing eye exercises to find out more about that. And um, so to then favor that one eye, you're really going to overwork it that little bit more. So that was my the thing I realized over the last 24 hours. I needed to say, yes, it's normal for a myopic, a highly myopic person to hold it that close. But you mm-hmm. need to think about fusion and we want you to hold fusion so we want you to do the eye exercises to the point where, uh, well, we, if you have that issue, mm-hmm. you're most likely do have fusion problems. Mm-hmm. So then you're going to want to do the uh, presbyopia charts, exercises like that, mm-hmm. where you cross your eyes and create a fused image mm-hmm. to develop that skill again. Because most likely if you're doing, you're dumping one eye and using the other one, you probably uh, have some fusion problems. You've yeah, developed but- it through that habit. Very similar for those maybe that uh, wear monovision glasses, uh, glasses yeah. or contact lenses is that you're favoring that one eye right. from near and from far. So it's a similar so, imbalance. Yeah. So anytime you start using one eye only, you're going to develop more and more fusion problems. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one thing. So so you want to do like shifting. You want to do the fusion exercises, maybe mm-hmm. some shifting so you can just get it out far enough so you can fuse again. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the obstruction exercise that we were talking about. Right. Um, to try and rest that eye as much as possible because if you're thinking about it, you're really overworking that. And another thing that is a little bit more difficult but is getting easier with modern day technology is to try and make the print bigger. Right. Um, now that could be, you know, if, if it's a book, maybe you could get it on an, e- on an e-book and then mm-hmm. view it on a tablet and then you could blow it up. Right. So that you're able to see... Uh, with both eyes, that larger text, right. instead of just bringing it over to one eye. Yeah. Or you can try and get text printed uh, larger, or if it's a particular letter or a web page, maybe you could um, print it off in larger text and then view it. And this is a, just as a side note, it's another problem with presbyopia and using magnifiers. If you use a single magnifier to read something, okay, then you're, you're using that one eye all the time. Right. So that's another way yeah. that it gets that way. So anyway, that's the... The longer answer I should have given on YouTube, but YouTube only gives you these so many characters yeah, anyway. 148 so. or something. Yeah. So. And as you can see, we like to use as many characters oh, yeah, as yeah. possible. Yeah, we, we have two right here. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's uh, video and audio recorded uh, podcast. And if you want to find out a little bit more information about eye exercises and in G- indeed maybe some uh, basic background on how you can improve your eyesight or how our modern day lives is maybe affecting our vision, then you can head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com and you'll find a, a free ebook over there that you can uh, download and then you can find out a little bit more information. If you want to follow us on Twitter, then just uh, look us up uh, on our website. You've also got our Twitter accounts there. And indeed, uh, head over to our Facebook fan page by just looking at Envision Self Healing. Come over, uh, like our page over there, ask any questions that you may have. And you can also check out some of the pictures um, from, uh, from my trip to New York. I didn't get a picture of the lift, unfortunately, or the elevator. It wasn't yeah. too. Uh, no, it wasn't too interesting. <laughs> um, so, but you can uh, you can also subscribe to this uh, video. Just check out either top left or top right. Um, and indeed, if you're listening to this on iTunes, then you could also subscribe to that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got a particular condition, then you can also head over to the website, and you should find, uh, or you will find, some eye exercises over there for you to do. Okay, great. Well, good luck with your eye exercises this week, everyone, and happy healing. And have a good week.